Hey everybody, whether you're an employee or an independent freelance consultant, one of the best ways to get on with your career is to get a reputation for being a brilliant and prolific business problem solver, even if the topic is something that you're not personally a subject matter expert in. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to adapt a coaching model to become a brilliant and prolific problem solver. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to take that model back into wherever you work and apply it. Now, my name's Steve and I coach professional people like you on ways of succeeding that come from a happier and more grounded place. So for the best videos and topics in that theme, then please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you'll get notified when new content arrives. Now, the model that I'm going to share with you, this coaching model which I spoke about, is de facto in coaching circles. It's what coaches have been using for decades to create great results with their coaching clients. It's a model that I use as a coach, and it's a brilliant way of facilitating problem solving. Now, I did say facilitating because there's something that I would like to convey about solving business problems in team environments. And that is that what's better than using your own knowledge is to elicit the collective wisdom and knowledge, the diverse wisdom and knowledge of the entire team. Because I guarantee you that that diverse knowledge, that sum of knowledge, is greater than any one person's. And that's where the key is. So to be a brilliant problem solver doesn't necessarily mean that you are the author of everything that comes up. It means that you are able to harness that collective wisdom, including your own, but also from the team. Now, that model is called the GROW model, G-R-O-W. And although it is taught as a coaching model, I've used it for years as a consultant as well. I've used it for years as a way of facilitating the creation of solutions to business problems. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So the first part of GROW is G, and G stands for goal, because whatever problem you're facing, there is a goal, a place to get to, if you want to put it in those terms. So the first step is to create a goal. Given the problem that we're facing, what is a reasonable goal? Now, sometimes that's really easy. For example, if the business problem is that sales are down, then the end goal is to get sales back up to some measurable benchmark of what's good. Um, in some cases, it might not be as obvious as that. And also, you get this idea of end goals and means goals, the stepwise means goals that lead to the end goals. And sometimes you have to take a step back from the end goal to focus on an interim goal that will help you get to the end goal. But that's what G is all about, is establish what the goal is. And this step of the process involves asking questions like, what is the measurable benchmark? of what's good. Um, and of course, this is going to start pointing at a very popular method for setting goals, which is the SMART model, specific, measurable, achievable, uh, relevant, and time-based. Now, if you want to find out more about the SMART model, because of course there are variations on what the SMART mean, then I've got a video up here which I will link that you can go to talk about the SMART model. Now, the second point is R. R stands for reality. What is the reality of the present state? Where are we now relative to the goal that we've chosen? And by the same terms that the goal should be measurable, then the reality should also be measurable. Now, sometimes it doesn't work that way. I mean, in coaching goals, sometimes you're dealing with uh, subjective things like, I want to have a better experience of something. But as much as possible with business goals, you want to try and make them as measurable as you can. So as well as making the goal measurable, make the you know apply those same measures to figure out where are we right now and how far away are we from our goal. By the way, as always, I am interested in your experience too. Whatever experience you've got of being a problem solver or being stuck being a problem solver, I would love to hear about it. If you're okay with sharing it, then please leave it as a comment. I'll read all the comments and I'll respond to as many as I can. So the third part of GROW is O. O is for options. So now you're going to be harnessing the collective, diverse knowledge and wisdom of the team throughout all of this process. This whole thing 
is a team process, not an individual process. But you're going to experience it perhaps more here because this is where we get really creative. So you might want to be stood up in a room. You might want to hand out post-it notes to people with pens uh, and get them to be as creative as they can be and just throw loads of ideas upon the wall because this is where you're going to create possible ways forward. You're going to ask, OK, we are here. We want to get here. What are all the different ways, including the radical ideas about how we might move from our reality to G goal? And by the way, you should definitely include the radical ideas as well as the obvious ideas. And then finally, you have W, which is way forward. This is where you're going to choose from the options, to decide this is what we're going to do to move from the reality of where we are to the goal that we want to achieve, which is in the, in the service of solving this problem. And like with all parts of this process, you want to really use the diverse wisdom of the whole team and you're not, not just trying to do this all by yourself. So you're going to go through all those post-it notes with options on there and you're going to sort through them, you're going to group them and you're going to evaluate them and ask your team questions like, you know, how good is this option versus this option? And with the team, arrive at the way forward. Now in marketing, they have this idea of split testing, which is to take two ways forward and basically test them against each other. And whichever one works better, you stick with that one and create a new rival for it. And you keep split testing one against the other and keep choosing the best one so that you incrementally get the better way forward. You can apply an idea like that here too, if you can afford the resources to do so. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you do have to go with one way forward. But it's worth having split testing in mind if you do have the resources and the opportunity to put two options against each other choose the winner and give it a new rival. Now, grow isn't something that you do once and forget about it, just the same way that you don't set goals once and then never set goals again. Um, you are going to want to measure how well your ways forward are working. And if they're not working as well as you'd hoped, you might want to go back and reevaluate. Did we choose the right way forward? Do we want to choose another one? You might want to go even further back and say, did we actually choose the right goal? Plus, big goals are often decomposed into smaller goals. So if the big goal is to get sales back on track to some measurable benchmark of what good looks like, that might, that might decompose into a number of goals. And you might want to do a bit of grow analysis on each of the sub goals. It might be that this team over here is going to take this decomposed goal. This team over here is going to take that decomposed goal. But we still need to come up with options and ways forward. And as well as goal decomposition, which is big goals into smaller goals, there's also sequencing of goals. It might be that we have to achieve this goal before we can attempt that goal, before we can attempt that goal, before we can attempt that goal. That may turn out that way as well. So you can keep iteratively and recursively applying the GROW model to the big goal, to the decomposed goals, to the stepwise goals, to go back and reevaluate it if the ways forward are not producing the results that you wanted. But the key thing is that the GROW model is a great way not only of coaching, and in fact it is coaching because what I'm actually showing you here is how to coach teams to come up with solutions, but it is a great way of structuring that kind of work. It is a great thing to have in your consultant's toolbox to go and help companies solve their business problems. Now, if this is a topic that you'd love to talk further about, I would certainly love to hear from you. You'll find my contact details in the pinned comment below this video. Also, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and please do like this video if you did like it. And I also mentioned the freebie, didn't I? Well, if you go to the description below this video or the pinned comment, either will do, you will find a link to a resource which I think will help you. It's called Managing Stress in the Moment and Making Better Decisions Under Pressure. Please help yourself. I would love for you to help yourself. And other than that, I'll see you next week.